collections of letters and stuff like that. And then, I can't remember the guy's name, but it was one of them in particular that did it, and he died. But they had like this huge letter of, or a huge amount of letters that he had sent, and they posed, or they um, um, published a book of all of his writings. It was really cool. Yeah, Country of My Own was a uh, song that I had written about whew, 22 years ago, something like that, 1998, give or take. Uh, some girl had cheated on me in college uh, that I was dating, um, and this was my murder fantasy song. So Country of My Own... Um not a song I wrote, but it was something that Dan brought up to me. I really digged, or dig, dug, dig, dug? Doug? Doug. <laughs> I really liked the song idea in itself, and when we sat down to, to kind of play around with it, it, it took, I would say, probably about an hour before we finally got something we liked. It took a little bit. But once, I, I think it was just, I was really just dicking around with some of the sliding parts, the guitar part you hear in the beginning. And uh, just as soon as that happened, I, I saw Dan's eyes just kind of light up and he had this, this aha moment. And then from there, honestly, it just kind of fell into place. I was like right on the verge of falsetto. Okay. So Failure to Thrive is a song that I wrote at this point, let me see, it was 2000, 2001, somewhere around there, a long time ago. And uh, I can't help you with the date on that one. No, I know, it's way before, <laughs> I know. way before your time, man. I, uh, before essentially, my time. <laughs> well, it was my first job working with um, at-risk youth and I wrote it in a training uh, which is probably not the best idea looking back on it but <laughs> my initial training at the entire thing they brought up the idea of failure to thrive um, and what that was and, and that some of our kids that we were working with were, were dealing with that so I kind of just took the idea and kind of spun it to my life and how that kind of you know affects that but I know, you know, your first hearing of it was in a five cent psychiatrist thing, because yeah. originally it was that. Yeah, when I, when I first kind of got together with you guys and started playing it, um, it it's, it's another one of those songs from the original five cent lineup that kind of really hit me in a, in a certain way. There's a few of them. Like, a lot of them are fun, they're good tunes, but like, this one particularly kind of hit me in a way that was like almost like animalistic. But like, okay. but like in a way it was like you, you're just trying to survive in this world that's just ready to fucking just beat you down in every second you have yeah that, that's you know? about right and it's and, and it's it's I don't know it, it almost sounds like a feral cry for like I'm not gonna go quietly into that good night I'm not gonna you know fucking just I'm not gonna sink like I'm, I'm here and it's, and it's nice that it worked for us because it never really worked as a five cent song um, I can see that. You know, yeah. it just never, the, the way we played it, the, the crowds we were playing to, it, they just never got it. Yeah, uh, whereas what we do, we've taken it and made it what it really should have been.
propose to you a fun song I've, I wrote years back about a, a partner of uh, mine and ex partner. It, it was <sighs> really if you, if if you listen to the words, they're not super. I guess descriptive. I don't know if that's if that's what you want to really go with, but uh, from being with them, from what I noticed, um, they were a very kind soul, very nice person. They still are today, uh, but watching them kind of reach this point, and then this decline started. And once the decline started, they try to fill everything they could with with things that didn't really matter to them, and they kind of pushed all the people away that could have helped them. Um, the, the, even in the beginning, the you live your life so sky high, it's, they started turning into drugs. Um, it's, it's, some of that is literal, some of it's not very literal. But um, t t they preferred being in an altered state instead of being in the present and trying to confront what is actually making them the way they are. Um, I know this song's kind of a beat, but if you think about it, like a lot of the stuff I write, it's kind of sad in a, in a weird, in a weird way. Um, but they just—it's it's just about the decline of someone that you kind of love, and you you're watching them decline. You don't really know what to do. You're just kind of along for the ride. Think is a song that uh, was originally written uh, for the band that I was playing in in New York uh, when I lived there. We were a three-piece uh, cow punk band called Bad Horse, and uh, we used to play that song out. and And it was one of those songs that I had written for my fiance Kim, and it's about the just the idea simply of we use our minds way too much when it comes to relationships and things. Uh, use your heart, don't use your head, because when you get caught up in here, it just fucks with you. Um, so don't get caught up in there um, thinking the bad things, uh, regardless of what your, your past is. And uh, so we used to play that in Bad Horse, but it never really saw the light of day as far as the recording was concerned. Uh, so I brought it to Jacob and, you know, it, it turned out great. Uh, we added the banjo to it in the recordings and it was awesome. I mean, Can Complain is a tune, it's just a, a raw over-exaggeration of the mundane existence that we all lead in one way, shape, or form. You know, bills and all shitty things that stress you out in life. It's like a when it rains and pours type of situation. Right. And yeah, it's an over-exaggeration, but... It's it, it in the moment when you're aggravated like that. Yep. Everything seems like an, an exaggeration, you know. Everything seems heightened to the fucking nth degree, and you're just you're ready to explode, you know. And this is another one of those five cent songs. Whenever I first heard it, I was like, this is this is a really good song. Um, it's a shame that no one else kind of really got into it the way. Yeah. I, was. I mean, it was one of those <laughs> last minute songs for the latest thing we did, and nobody really got into it. We never even played it live. Yeah. Um, and never saw the light of day. 
Uh, and I think we took it and, and did what we needed to do with it. And I think, it, you know, it's a fun little tune. And when we do it live, people don't know what to do because they're not expecting all that cursing. Yes, they're this, in the words of my mother, it's the prettiest song she's ever heard with as many swear words as it has. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I think it's a great song. It really speaks to your heart but it also kind of gives you a little bit of a chuckle because the chorus is essentially just a string of swear words. But it is. It's it's that feeling of just being trapped and being, right. you know, you know what, I shouldn't complain about all this stuff. It is That's what the ironic thing about all this is that the whole song is complaining. The whole song is complaining, but in the end, it's just like, I fuck it, can't complain. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it kind of reminds me, like, whenever you meet someone, yeah, or you talk to someone, you're like, hey, how's it going, you know? They have all this shit going on behind you know, behind the, the curtain that they might not be want to talk about. But right. They're just like, ah, oh, you know, can't complain. Yeah. You just you're like inside, they're just like, holy cow, asshole, goddamn son of a bitch. You know, I, I, I like it. You can also call it the Tourette's of songs, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> The nice thing about Almost Home is it's it's the first song that us as a duo did as a collaboration. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. You know? I mean, you pretty much, you had the, the song written. Most of it. But we had that little bit of a verse left that I had. Yeah, that verse left yeah. and then just putting the harmonies together on it and everything. Getting but it's it the first again. song we truly collaborated on. True. It, and it's it's one of the songs that I, I wrote, I, God, it got to be like eight years ago now. And I was listening to a lot of My Morning Jacket at the time, so I was like, oh, you know, because if you look at the original idea for the song, it had a lot more, um, it was a lot more laid back. Okay. It had more of like a, a very slow ska sound to it, uh, okay. just with the chords itself. But it's that's the thing, if you listen to like old um, My Morning Jacket, like Tennessee Fire era, you kind of get the idea, Foam Link West, if, if you hear the song Foam Link West, that's kind of what the song originally had that sound. But I never did anything with it, so it just sat in my, my song vault forever because I couldn't figure out a second verse. Then I just forgot about it. And whenever we started getting together to do music, that was one of the ones I was like, let's pull it out and give it a go. And it turned out to be a really, really good song. It's, um, I mean, it's just another corny love song, if you really think about it. Right. It was one of those things, like, I, I used to work really, really late hours. I worked night shift at a... At a State hospital for um, for mentally I know challenged people. Well. Um, so there would be days I'd work 16-hour shifts. You know, I would go in at 11 o'clock at night. I'd get home at you know, three the next day, and that was one of the things that kind of kept me through. It was like I'm almost home. Right. I'm getting close. I'm I, I'm almost to where you know this is where I belong with the person I belong with. Uh, that's really all it is. It's just meant to be a sweet little ballad and you really helped out a lot with that second verse to kind of drive that, it in that home. uppercut there <laughs> just kind of end it you know it's a nice end to the EP you know it, it is it kind of like leaves everything on a nice calm note yeah and, yeah know. after yelling at everybody for a few songs it's like all right here we just calm it down a little bit <laughs> but it's it, it works it, it it's, it's a good still fire bellow song for sure and it, the collaboration so you can't beat that Yeah. Mm -hmm. 